as Europe faces the pressing challenge of transitioning to sustainable energy, the ocean remains a vast, clean, yet largely untapped power source. With its waves and tides covering over 70% of our planet, could the ocean be the key to our energy future? This high power water pipe right under the ocean's surface off Gran Canaria's coast is part of a new technology designed to harness the power of ocean waves. Michael Heenrithsen is at the helm of Wave Piston, a Danish company which has created this prototype with support from the European Union. The device is undergoing a series of tests in real ocean conditions and is set to continue for the year. The natural movement of the waves pushes these underwater plates back and forth, pumping seawater into the pipe. Then the pressurised water turns a turbine, producing an affordable source of clean energy. There are a lot of energy in the waves, but we have still not been able to, in the world, to make something that is competitive compared to the other renewable sources. Going offshore is difficult, and that's why the low-hanging fruits have been getting renewable energy onshore. Now we're moving offshore, offshore wind is coming, floating offshore wind coming, and wave energy is also coming now. This method is intentionally simple but effective, cutting down on costly offshore repairs. The seawater, once pumped to land, serves two purposes. It's used to generate clean energy and can also be turned into fresh water, a massive benefit to coastal areas. We would like to have the first locations relatively close to shore, because then we can go directly to shore for the energy conversion. And by having this system, where you can see it's under the water, most of the things, so you don't spoil the view, it's a very unobtrusive system. The energy conversion and water desalination components are being tested at this offshore research facility, a part of PLOCAN, the oceanic platform of the Canary Islands. Dennis and Michael were lifted onto the platform by a crane to get a closer look. Test sites like this are helping to put Europe at the forefront of offshore renewable energy generation. Here, innovative companies like WavePiston can test their prototypes. They have everything they need at hand, connection to the power grid, all sorts of instruments and sensors to benefit their trials. We are having more and more projects, not only trying different technologies that make the most of the waves, the current or other types of energy generation, but also studying, for example, if corrosion that occurs here because we are in oceanic conditions is affecting the windmills, for example, or how these sandstorms that are quite often here can affect the efficiency of the equipment. The ocean's pretty quiet today, but that's not always the case. The offshore power machines need to handle big storms without breaking down. Wave Piston uses plates made of polypropylene, a material that can bend a lot without snapping. When the sort of forces or the loads from the waves, they get too high, like in storm uh, situations, then they bend all the way in and then the water just passes by. So it's a, a sort of a passive system that takes care of itself and can bend out when it's needed. Harnessing the waves is a great way to make clean electricity from the ocean, but that's not the only method out there. Let's head to the French Alps near the city of Grenoble, where HydroQuest is using turbines spun by tidal streams to turn water flow into electricity. This method works best in narrow channels where currents are strong, like Alderney Race in Normandy. Here, HydroQuest is planning to build the world's first powerful tidal farm, a big step towards clean energy that is both reliable and predictable. On modélise parfaitement les mouvements de la Lune et les effets gravitationnels avec la déformation des marées. Donc on sait exactement ce qui se passe, moyennant la connaissance de la zone avec la forme du fond. On peut prévoir des dizaines d'années à l'avance les vitesses qu'on aura sur site et donc la production d'électricité en conséquence. HydroQuest has demonstrated the power of its technology in a recent project called Tiger. Funded by the EU, it aims to boost tidal stream energy in and around the English Channel. HydroQuest says its latest turbine design is lighter and more environmentally friendly than ever before. Nous, on pense avoir une technologie à la fois performante, robuste et très adaptée pour fonctionner dans des flux très turbulents, comme c'est le cas dans l'océan. La ferme pilote, c'est un projet de, de 17,5 MW avec 7 machines qui ont été installées en ligne sur une concession au milieu du Rat Blanchard. 
La production d'électricité, c'est 41 gigawattheures par an. Powerful ocean waves and tides along Europe's Atlantic and North Sea coasts are helping innovators ride the wave of Europe's transition to cleaner local energy sources. Changes are already visible in some industrial ports that are making room for more marine energy projects. Over 120 groups in this growing field are represented by Ocean Energy Europe. Dennis had a chat with Remy Gruet, the head of this network, at the port of Viena do Castello in Portugal. The good news is that we have a lot of sea. Europe has one of the largest coastlines in the world. We've identified that wave and tidal together can produce about 10% of current electricity consumption, which might sound small, but it's exactly what hydropower today, the big dams on all of the rivers in Europe, are producing. A few tidal farms are already up and running, and now we're seeing the first commercial scale wave energy converters, like this device from Core Power Ocean recently shown to withstand fierce storms at an offshore test site in Portugal while keeping costs manageable. Most of the previous devices failed because they need to be built for the worst case scenario. So they fail because they are too expensive, too heavy. The up and down motion of the buoy is constantly adjusting so it can get the most energy out of each wave while ensuring the device stays safe when the waves get really high. That concept has allowed us to overcome a lot of the basic issues that are connected with wave energy from the beginning, starting with survivability, but also using less materials to get the same result or even better. Composed of fiberglass, the boys are produced right at the port. Then just a simple tugboat is all it takes to bring them out to sea. They can also be set up near existing offshore wind farms using the same underwater cables. With more and more wave and tidal projects getting close to commercial use, Europe's coastal economy is on the brink of a big change in the coming years. It's a future where coastlines become not only a product of electricity, but also a production of jobs, because all of these technologies can be produced locally very easily. So yeah, a mix of wind and solar, tidal, wave, wherever they are, and then you have a decarbonized energy system that delivers low-cost electricity to the consumer where it needs it. The European Union has big plans for wave and tidal energy. It plans to ramp it up to an industrial scale by 2030. Ocean energy, both abundant and renewable, is set to help Europe turn the tide on its power supply.